Hello, everyone. Yeah, sorry for being late. There were technical uh, issues apparently that didn't allow us to present. Um, Welcome to our session about Teams Governance Automation at Scale. My name is Matthias Einig and with me is Björn. Hey Björn. Hi everyone. All right, so um, let's jump right into it. Um, can some, someone is on, the, on this call who has, yeah. um, has their mic muted? So um, I think, uh, Russ, maybe that's you. Um, can you mute your mic, please? All right, it's all good. Okay, so let's let's dive into it. This seems to be a little bit complicated this time around with with teams, but as we are in a teams event, I think um, well, we all learn together with it, right? Um, so, what do we want to talk about? Teams governance automation at scale. So, um, we want to tell you a little bit about the experience that we have made um, over the time what we've learned around Teams governance and governance in general for Microsoft 365 um, and what did we actually do so for over a year I think almost one and a half years we performed quite an intensive research and wanted to, uh, with the purpose to uh, identify the current m365 governance channels so we interviewed our existing customers we interviewed um, msps consultants and so on um, one moment uh, ross can you please mute yourself okay so now okay there's some background noise from from ross apparently i muted him um, and uh, basically what we want to share with you what we have learned and um, what came out of that those learnings basically what are the common challenges so Bjorn please um, go ahead there um, so kind of when we talk about teams and uh, Microsoft 365 governance let's first of kind of find out what people told us what um, governance actually means to them right because I think we need to kind of a, have a common definition of on, on the topic on the topic so what we find out found out in this research is that there are kind of these four steps included in teams and uh, Microsoft 365 governance first of all you want to get information about your environment right so you need to know what's going on second of all probably some people or maybe a lot of people they have a governance plan but it's it exists as a sheet of paper it's a PDF which you need to take and apply to your findings um, of your environment then you build out reports for the different stakeholders and you want to act on these findings to kind of enforce your governance um, to make things happen and so on. How do people currently manage it out of the box? Um, so currently, as you all know, you have these separate admin centers which provide static reports. So here we are now talking about teams. So you go to the team's admin center and then you try to get find the information necessary. If you're doing governance for more than only one service, meaning Teams and Power Automate and Power Apps and SharePoint and Azure and all of these different things, that becomes a little complicated because you need to go to these different admin centers, right? Um, so the downside with these different admin centers is you have limited insights. Um, you need to go there to get the info and the reports are not actionable. Second thing is maybe you want to automate, right? It is possible, but it requires custom work to build and maintain. So you have these PowerShell scripts that you need to write. You need to stay on top of that, um, which requires extensive knowledge and you really um, um, need to get going on that. For a lot of people that we talked to um, during our research, they told us that's not got good enough for us. Um, we can't do it like this. Um, so they fall to a thing that we um, phrase do it yourself governance. This do it yourself governance approach looks like the following. Still the reporting is based on the admin centers, but now I either have my own IT admin or I get consultants that write custom PowerShell scripts that go through the different admin centers. So if we're not only talking about teams, but more admin centers that becomes more complex, um, obviously and then get the data and the output is oftentimes that this goes then into Excel or SharePoint list. What now? Now I have all that of that information in Excel or SharePoint and I find out, for example, that I have certain teams that have um, less than two owners, which is um, against my governance plan, or I find um, teams that have private channels, which I maybe I don't want. And 
maybe I find unused teams and all of this different stuff. So I need to do something with that with that information now, right? So what are the people doing? They manually act on the data by sending emails to owners and users asking, what do we do with this? Can we delete this? Can we archive this? And so on and so on. Um, also, they need to prepare reports for meetings. So for example, stakeholders ask, the security team asks, for example, hey, give me a list of all um, teams that have guests or these kind of things, right? So they need to build up these reports. Um, and then obviously they need to remove unused resources and they need to stay on top of that tracking progress of these actions, which is a little hard because it's all very manual. The downside of that approach is, again, it requires extensive experience and ongoing education because you need to stay on top of what Microsoft builds, your PowerShell scripts still need to work and these kind of things. It is expensive to build and maintain, so we have a lot of um, conversations with bigger organizations as well that do this do-it-yourself governance and that told us that they spent quite a significant amount of money to build this out and then need to on an ongoing basis maintain this obviously it distracts it from facilitating business because it with that approach oftentimes is not capable of um, building out the right reports for different stakeholders for example with a few it admins telling us the stakeholders address us they want certain reports we have to say no to them because we don't know how to find them we don't get them out of the um, admin centers we would need to script something we don't know how to do it we can't do it so Sorry, guys. Um, for consultants, another downside is they need to build the same PowerShell over and over again. Um, and then, um, Matt, maybe t tell us a little bit about specific teams' concerns as we are here in a team-specific governance um, session. Yeah. Yeah, so so a friend of ours uh, and MVP Joanne Klein, she uh, a while back uh, asked a question on Twitter and uh, about the biggest challenges or biggest concerns about Microsoft Teams and Tenant, and um, there were some interesting answers that also um, aligned with what we heard with our customers. So um, maybe turn on. The first one. Um, so, for example, there was an answer. The biggest concern is uh, about inactivity and orphan teams. So, the problem is clear. Um, organizations, uh, yeah, if they adopt teams, then that means basically that people in the organization create teams for projects, for initiatives, for um, organizational teams and so on, but these things are changing con uh, constantly in the organization. People come and go, um, projects are finished, um, initiatives are done, I don't know, the, the summer party or whatever uh, reason that team had, and then it uh, generates a lot of clutter that yeah, makes it harder to find other stuff. So this this whole unused teams, uh, inactivity of teams is kind of problematic for many organizations the longer they use it. Then another worry is, um, yeah, basically, yeah, that customers adopted teams extremely quickly now during the, the whole uh, COVID crisis. Um, basically, without real plan, they needed to make their workforce um, yeah, work from home capable, basically. So they jumped, uh, rolled out teams and uh, didn't really think about the regulatory um, challenges that come around and especially in industries, let's say, for example, healthcare, where you have a lot of um, personal identifiable information that might um, be not, should not be maybe shared in certain ways and retained in certain other ways. For example, in a chat, things are stored in the OneDrive of that user who uploaded a file and that is then suddenly maybe not governed anymore. So um, the lack of understanding there is a big challenge. Um, then in general, the life cycle. So even if the teams um, yeah, are used, not unused like in the first example, um, they still have a life cycle or organizations change, reorganize, um, organizational teams get merged or uh, split apart. What happens with people who have access? What, what happens with guest users who might have access to data? So um, this uh, managing the entire life cycle is a challenging piece as well and then yeah teams microsoft is pushing P teams of course also towards being the central hub to basically um, get all the information in one place integrating with other apps um, that 
put uh, data into Teams channels or also pushing data out of Teams into other apps. And that becomes very challenging for the IT to manage actually where does data come from, what has access to data, to conversations, um, and where does it go if you connect an app, for example, let's say, for example, an external poll app into your Teams channel, then um, it might, if somebody uses that app, they might accidentally disclose confidential information to the app that is hosted somewhere outside of the organization, um, but it makes the appearance it's inside the organizational tool teams. Yeah, and then uh, of course what we hear over and over again is security compliance. So um, yeah, what happens with the data um, retention policies, um, yeah, when people leave also the organization, what happens to the data that they have created or that they own? Um, does it stay there or where does it go? Who owns it then? And organizations often push these kind of um, challenges away and basically ignore them until they become a real problem. And that is, of course, um, maybe not the best choice <laughs> that you can make. So. To distill this a little bit down, we identified uh, our top 10 governance uh, channels for teams that uh, challenges for teams that we have identified together with our customers. So we had already before unused teams, also unused teams channels. Everybody can create a teams channel that can create quite a mess. Um, teams with less than two owners, that's more like, okay, if somebody leaves the company or is no longer accessible, um, let's say getting sick, um, then suddenly nobody is able to manage that team anymore, uh, approve members and so on. So making sure that there are at least two owners can be such a policy to govern your team and make sure that you're always able to, to admin, administer it. Similar teams without owners at all because, uh, or disabled owners, um, of course, makes them kind of inaccessible, less challenging. Teams with similar names and that do not match custom, custom naming conventions goes along with each other. So just imagine somebody creates uh, an HR something team, let's say HR EMEA, although there is already an IHR team and so if other people uh, disclose information in that team despite not being the official HR team, things like that. or um, yeah, you want to enforce maybe certain naming conventions to make teams better discoverable and have not um, total crazy things in the in the names. Let's say maybe forbidden words, maybe offensive words in teams URLs or names, things like that. Uh, especially larger organizations want to um, yeah prevent teams with bots. That's the same example I had before. Also. Well, where does the bot, is the bot hosted? Where does the data go that I write towards the bot? Um, and what happens to it? Is it governed by our organization? Guests and teams, people invite guests, communicate with them, but rarely somebody cleans those guests up again when they don't no longer need access. Connectors, similar like with bots. And yeah, then since a while, since a year now, I've, we have private channels, which brings on the one hand the ability of yeah, basically avoiding creating additional teams just for a smaller group of people. But in the background, it creates a hell of a mess in, in Office 365 because each private channel gets its own site collection to store the files and gets its own permissions and so on. And that can result in additional clutter and um, yeah, problems in governing it. So um, what came out to summarize that a little bit, um, first of all, organizations realize they need one central place for governance. All these different um, admin centers are very hard to maintain. You need to know where to look uh, in order to get the information you need. Some things are not accessible easily. Maybe you don't have the permissions. Also, Microsoft is constantly changing the admin centers. So having a central place for all the services is uh, one of the key requirements. Then the rules themselves, although they are seem to be very similar um, for most of organizations. At the end, this needs to be very flexible uh, nevertheless. So maybe the one organization 
has a naming convention like that and the other one wants a different one. So having just a, a hard set rule is not uh, meeting the requirements. Um, yeah, and then identifying the governance policy violations um, is one part of the story, but what do you do with all of these violations? Somebody needs to solve them or resolve them, um, do something about it, and the more you find, the more effort you will have to resolve that. And many of these things could be actually automated, so not, for example, uh, let's pick one up uh, before, an unused team, well, you can automatically write, for example, the team's owner, hey, we have identified a team that hasn't been used in the last 90 days. Can we clean it up? Or we are going to clean it up if you don't respond back. And so you can automate that process. And that is the second part of the story, basically um, automating and scaling this up without having to do all of that manually. And then a last use case that we identified is especially in larger organizations, if you have many stakeholders throughout your organizations, uh, let's say business departments, security compliance, admins, the CIO, everybody needs something uh, reported, some information reported, and they want to have that usually instantly and on a regular schedule. And grabbing all the data together manually every single time uh, is a cumbersome and annoying job and also very error prone. So having a standardized easy reporting that you can deliver fast and in best case automated is a key requirement here. So Björn, show a little bit what came out of all these uh, findings that we had over the time. All right, perfect, let's do it. So um, what we came up with is a solution which is called record governance and we are still in beta. Um, and it consists of these four different parts, right? So you first, when you um, connect a tenant to our solution, we set you up with some different dashboards according to the services that you want to govern. And um, the other thing is that you have this overview dashboard, which serves as kind of your cockpit to tell you what you need to do immediately. The way that works is on the left hand side, we have inventory KPIs, which you can explore on the right hand side. That's kind of your violations to what we call checks and checks in our lingo are governance rules that you specified. So here you see that we find 45 high violations. So if I click these, I see now what has been violated. Um, these violations are coming from these checks, how we call them, or the governance rules. So let's look at how we can set up a governance rule and talk about kind of flexibility. If you add a check or a governance rule, we are working with a template library with certain governance rules that we found out during our research that are pretty important to people. Um, and these things will grow over time. We have an, a backlog of more, I think 100 more checks that will go into here. Let's have a look at how, of how that works. So for example, I want to now build out a check or a governance rule for, let's say, Teams with private channels, right? And I just click this template. I have a pre-filled filter logic, which I can then say, I can edit this if that makes sense in that example. And then I can give it some detail, so I can give it a name. Um, and then I can click done and then this enable it and then this will pull in data um, from the system from the last um, scan that we ran which we do on a continuous daily basis and then I see my violations here. I can explore these violations so now I see this thingy here has private channels and I see the properties around this object. I can see kind of my jumping off points. Uh, uh, what does it the thing, thing do to explore a little bit more. So this is kind of this setting up certain governance rules or checks, how we call them, um, editing them to my liking, getting a fresh and, 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 and quick start, and then exploring some things. This here doesn't take into consideration that I want to handle check violations automatically, but we can do this as well. So for evil, for every check that you created, you can add automation. 
And that brings us to our automi automation library where we integrate into different things. So now you can decide um, for whenever I have, I have a violated check, then I can either trigger a notification via email or via Teams to a Teams channel, or I can trigger more powerful stuff like an Azure function, a webhook, and soon a Power Automate, and that can do whatever for me. The way that looks is, for example, for email, is that you choose the check that you want to, or the violation of the check that you want to automate towards. You can then you can then get from us a template of how this email could look like with dynamic placeholders that you could work for uh, work with. You could test this out that it pulls in all the relevant information um, from the dynamic um, placeholders, and then you can get it into action, and then it works. For the Teams um, notification, just to show you this, as we are in a Teams governance summit or in a, in a, in a Teams session here, um, here it works like this, that you can specify a card that gets posted to a um, certain Teams channel that you define. All right, so we talked about checks where you specify with our check templates, certain checks that follow certain logic and that you can customize to your liking. Then we show you the violations. You can explore these violations in depth and then you can automate solving or notifying of these violations. What Matt already also mentioned in the summary sheet, what we found out, what is very important to people is to create dashboards or reports for different stakeholders. So what we can do here is you can create dashboards um, and then you can, for example, say, hey, I want to create a, a blank dashboard. Um, I give it a name. And then I put my reports in there. How that works is that we have different tiles in the library. Tiles are our lingo again for reports and these get filled up by all the checks that you build or all the inventory data that you build and you can just put them into the dashboard. If you're not satisfied with that, you can create your custom reports pretty easily based on either governance rules, inventory data that we have or advanced. I won't go into that now because I just want to give you a quick overview. But kind of to summarize what we do here, and then let's go back to um, the presentation. Based on the learnings from all of this research, we are creating a governance tool that you can use to govern different services in one, in one governance solution. So currently we can do governance for Power Automate, Teams, SharePoint, and Office 365 groups. Soon we will, we will be able to govern Power Apps as well, and then Azure, OneDrive, and all of these different services. So you have it all in one place. You don't need to go to different admin centers. You can flex, with full flexibility, specify your governance rules, either based on predefined templates that we deliver, or you can build them from scratch as well. And you can automate and have full flexibility of how you want to automate. So we integrate into um, your whole processes. So you can trigger emails, you can trigger power automates, you can trigger teams and so on to automate solving of issues. And you can dig deeper into inventory data around objects that are interesting to you. With that said, we again, the main findings, one central place for governance needed. That's what we check now. Governance rules need to be defined very flexible and match individual business needs. That's what we can, can do in here. Solving violations can be done automatically. That's what we can do. And the stakeholder reporting needs to be easy and fast. That's what we want to, to do as well. We are, as I said, still in beta and we are still actively looking for beta testers. Um, if you have, if you would like to join us in this preview and maybe analyze your own test tenant or your own tenant, totally cost free at the moment. You can sign up for the preview at this link um, and then we get in touch with you, set you up with the system. You can play around with it and we would be ha very happy to get your feedback of what can be improved, what is still missing and these kind of things. Matt, anything you want to add at the, at the end? 
Um, no, not necessarily. So uh, the interesting part about this entire research was that we basically realized that all the organizations are pretty much alike throughout the world and throughout the type of organization, but um, still require that flexibility. And that's basically what we have been aiming for to give you enough yeah, ready made stuff um, templates to get started without having to think of everything yourself, basically getting inspiration, but providing you the entire flexibility to adjust it to your specific needs in your organization. I think that's that's quite the yeah, the interesting, most interesting part about this, what we are currently planning to build. Um, so I hope you liked it and um, we are open for some more questions. We rushed a little bit now that session as we started quite late. Um, please feel free to drop us some Q&A or contact us also through our website if you like. Thank you very much. Thanks.